The Cleveland Cavaliers defense was one of the worst in the league, and the problem starts with most of their players not being good individual defenders. You can't expect Andre Drummond to make up for four bad defenders in the lineup. So with the fifth pick, the Cavaliers went with a prospect touted for his defensive potential, Isaac Okoro out of Auburn University. This 6'6", 230 pound forward brings attitude, toughness, and a competitive spirit. Okoro ranked in the 90th percentile in points allowed per one-on-one -on -one possession in college basketball last season. You now have a guy on the perimeter who can potentially lock down on defense. On offense, Okoro did most of his scoring in transition and in the paint. He only shot 28% from three-point range. That obviously needs to get better. But he is a player that's not going to disrupt the flow of the offense. He knows when to cut and is willing to make the necessary pass. Okoro may not end up being a top five player in this draft, but he's the perfect prospect for the Cavaliers. If he can give you the impact that Marcus Smart gives the Boston Celtics, then this selection would have been worth it. I give the Cleveland Cavaliers a B plus. The Detroit Pistons need a young talent in the worst way, and they need a lot of it. And it's safe to say that the Pistons accomplished their goal on draft night. They made some moves to put them in position to get at least three talented prospects in this year's class. Let's start with the seventh pick, Killian Hayes, who I believe has a legit chance to be one of the best players in this draft. I had him as my second best prospect behind LaMelo Ball. Hayes has the best combination of shooting, passing, and ball handling in this draft. He is one of the youngest players and has been playing against pros in the Euro League for the past three years, and he definitely held his own. His outside shooting has improved, and he added more moves to his offensive repertoire like the step back three pointer that looks similar to James Harden and Luka Doncic. Hayes has also added some muscle to his frame recently, and he is now listed at 6'5, 215 pounds. That gives me even more confidence that he'll be one of the best in the draft. I believe he will be in the running for rookie of the year. The Pistons traded for their next two first round picks. With the 16th pick, they went with the big man from the University of Washington, Isaiah Stewart. Stewart brings an edge and a grit to the Pistons team. Detroit is a blue collar city, and Stewart is a blue collar type of player. He's physically ready to play in the NBA more than any other prospect. He only stands at 6'9", but has a ridiculous wingspan at 7'5", which helped him block two shots a game. He seeks contact in the paint, shows good footwork and has a soft touch around the basket. He averaged 17 points and 9 rebounds in his freshman year. With Mason Plumley and Jaleel Okafor on the roster, Stewart may not get too much playing time in this rookie year. With their 19th pick, the Pistons selected a legit 3 and D prospect, Sadiq Bey. If you want to play for Jay Wright at Villanova, you gotta play defense. And Sadiq was one of the best in college basketball. Being 6'8", 220 pounds with a 16 wingspan, he has the tools to be able to be a good defender on the next level. He also shot very well from the three-point line, shooting 45% on five and a half attempts per game. He will have to continue working on his handle to be able to be more than a spot-up shooter. With the 38 pick, they drafted Saban Lee from Vanderbilt University. He's a 6'2 point guard with a reported 6'9 wingspan. Lee is an athletic point guard with a scoring mentality, loves to get in the lane and draw contact. His outside shooting was one of his weaknesses as he shot only 32% from three. I don't know if he ever played that much in the NBA, but this was a selection that the Pistons could afford to make after their first three picks. I give the Detroit Pistons an A. The Indiana Pacers had only one pick in the entire draft with the 54th pick, and they chose a very good prospect in Cassius Stanley out of Duke University. Him and K.J. Martin are two of the most athletic players in the draft. He was a human highlight reel for the Blue Devils all year, but he showed he's more than just a dunker. He's an excellent rebounder for a guard, shot a solid percentage from three-point range, and he has all the physical tools along with a high motor to be a plus defensive player on the next level. Even though he came out as a freshman, he's now 21 years old, but I believe he's a late bloomer who has a lot of room for improvement. It's already announced that the Pacers signed him to a two-way contract. Spending more time developing his game is a must because I don't believe he's ready to get regular minutes in the NBA right now. Stanley committed twice as many turnovers as assists last season. But overall, this was a solid pick at 54. I give the Indiana Pacers a B-. After the first three picks went as expected, 
The Chicago Bulls pick at number four is really when the draft got started. Most thought the Bulls would address the small forward position. It was just a question of which one would they draft. And they went with Florida State forward Patrick Williams. This possibility started gaining some steam around two weeks before the draft. Patrick Williams is a combination of athleticism, length, size, and versatility. This pick is obviously more about his potential than his production at Florida State. Williams came off the bench in all 29 games he played in his freshman season. The pre-draft workouts clearly convinced the Bulls front office that this guy, who was once projected as a late lottery pick, is worthy of a top four selection. Williams is the second youngest player in the draft class and brings a lot to the table. He projects as a high-motor defensive-minded forward with very impressive physical tools and potential as a playmaker and a scorer. He does a lot of things well, but can he develop into a reliable offensive player? As a Bulls fan, I hope this guy turns out to be a perennial all-star. But I can't help but think that the Bulls may have made the wrong decision with this pick. I would have preferred a player like Danny Avnia, a player who is just as talented, if not more, who has played against better competition over the last couple of years and gotten better and better. Williams could very well be a solid pro in the NBA. But when you're picking at that spot, you're not looking for just a solid pro. You're looking for a star caliber player. I just believe that Avnia has a higher ceiling and has a better chance to be a star player if he reaches his potential. With their second round pick, the Bulls went with the seven footer for Montenegro, Marco Samanich with the 44th pick. He will be stashed overseas for at least a year. He's a very skilled seven footer who can run the floor very well, can handle the rock, and is deadly from three point range. Almost in the mode of a Kristaps Porzingis type. He is currently shooting 51% from the field, 41 from three, and 83% from the free throw line in seven games of the 2021 season overseas. Arturus Kornishova has had a history of finding hitting gems in the second round when he was with the Denver Nuggets. In a year or two, Simonish could be the latest of second round picks by Kornishovas to thrive in the NBA. I may believe that the Bulls should have drafted Avnia over Williams, but this was still a solid draft for the Bulls. I don't believe Patrick Williams will be an all-star in his career, but he has a great chance to be a solid starter who could be a lockdown defender for a long time. I give the Chicago Bulls a B minus. The Milwaukee Bucks felt they had to make a big move in the offseason for a better chance in keeping their franchise player. Coming back with the same roster would have been disastrous for the franchise. They swung a trade for star veteran guard Drew Holiday, who was a massive upgrade over Eric Bledsoe. He gives you the same defensive presence that Bledsoe gave you and provides so much more offense. Not only is Holiday a better offensive player in every way, but he's also a good playmaker, something that Bledsoe is not known for. Last season, Holiday averaged 19 points, almost 7 assists, and 5 rebounds for the Pelicans. He will be essentially the third option on offense, which is perfect for him. But as much as I love Drew Holiday, the Bucks may have given up too much. It was a steep price to pay to get him. Three first round picks with the ability to swap first rounders twice. And to add insult to injury, Holiday is on a one year deal. But even if he had two or three years left on his deal, I would still believe they gave up too much. But ultimately, if this is the move that convinces Giannis to stay, then it doesn't matter. It'll be all worth it. With their 45th pick, the Bucks went with Louisville Junior Ford, Jordan Warrer. Now this guy certainly had his ups and downs during his college career. There were many times he failed to show up in big games, but he obviously won't be asked to help carry an NBA team offensively. Over his three year career, he averaged 18 points, seven rebounds while shooting 40% from three point territory. Catching and shooting is something he's really good at. And he will have a lot of opportunities to do that playing with a guy like Giannis. Wara is a 6'7 forward who is already 22 years old. And there are questions about who he'll be able to guard on defense. With their last second round pick, they decided to add another prospect that shot the lights out in college. Sam Merrill out of Utah State. He was also part of the Drew Holiday trade. Mara is the oldest prospect selected in this draft class at 24 years old. He has good size at 6'5", a high basketball IQ, and can shoot from anywhere on the court. He shot 41% from three and 90% from the free throw line. Mara was the Mountain West Player of the Year and a two-time tournament MVP. He's also a good playmaker, but just like Wara, the question is can he hold up on defense? 
Mero is limited athletically and could have a lot of trouble staying in front of NBA guards. With the combination of the Bucks giving up a lot to get Drew Holiday and the two second round picks that add more shooting to the roster, I give the Milwaukee Bucks a C+.